All right, welcome back to the channel. We are level one online. And what you're looking at right here, this is the CP Tang 25K. It's an FPGA, and right now there is a Super Nintendo that is being developed for this. It's currently in beta stages. And first of all, before I get started, just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Keo Daikin. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. I'll also be putting links to the where I purchased this from. I got this off AliExpress and I'll be covering the proper parts to order. Okay, so let's just do a brief overview of this. So this board right here, this is the CP Tang 25K. You can actually order this board alone. I don't recommend it. What I recommend is ordering this with the, uh, the dock. And it comes all together in one package. It's already pre-assembled for you. The next thing you'll have to order is the SD RAM. And then you have to order the, it's called the P mods. These are these little connectors. These two come together in a package. And then you also need the joystick P mod. And I'm going to show you how to put this together. It has to be put together in the proper order. So this one is called the DVI. It's actually just a HDMI so we want to just connect this right here the next is this one right here and once again make sure you do this in the proper order that's what's recommended by the developer of this uh, Super Nintendo software and then right here this is your SD card slot just put that right there like that okay and in case anyone is wondering this is about the size of like like a credit card okay just a little size comparison and then the last thing is the uh, SD so it says this side faces outward so we're gonna put it like this and be very careful with this with the pins because I would just recommend putting it in but do not take it out because you might end up bending one of the pins that's what happened to me uh, luckily, it still works. I was able to bend it back in place. It also comes with the USB-C type cable. And that plugs in like so. And that's it. We just need to head over to the computer. The other thing, there is a uh, SD card slot. Now, I had trouble getting this going. with. I, I went through about three SD card slots. The one that actually worked for me is the SanDisk Ultra 128 gigabyte. Uh, it must be formatted in FAT32, so there's programs out there that can force this to uh, FAT32, and I'll go over the recommended software for that. All right, so the next thing I want to go over is how to properly order this off of AliExpress and make sure you're getting the right parts. So when the screen opens up, uh, you're going to be greeted on this page, and it's going to say right here, it says bundle PMOD camera kit. Look at the icon right here. You do not need this part to the next of that right here it says core board package this is just a chip by itself what I recommend getting is this right here this is the basic bundles called the basic package this is the docking board with the core board already attached to it with the USB cable so from there you can go ahead and add that to cart now Right here, the next one, this is the PMOD basic kit. From here, we need the DVI attachment, and we also need the TF card reader. You can go ahead and add that one to cart. That's $12. The next one right here, the PMOD joystick kit. This is the attachment right here. I was surprised it actually comes with two controllers. Go ahead, hit add to cart. The next attachment says PMOD LED matrix kit. You do not need that. The bottom one right here, SD RAM, you need that one. Go ahead and add that one to cart. So here's everything. And once again, make sure you're purchasing from the CP store. So we have $10, $8, $12, $29, which brings us to a total of $59. The shipping, unfortunately, for me, it's coming up to close to $30. So we're looking at a grand total of about $90 and it will take for about a week or two for it to arrive from China. 
All right, moving on. Once you got everything assembled, you want to download this software package right here, the SNES Tang. So shout out to the developer, Nand to Mario for taking the time to do this. And he has some instructions right here that you can follow along. So there's a link right here, download the SNES Tang release. Here's the package right here, go ahead and download that. When that opens up, you're gonna see a folder, SNES Tang. And then here's the file right here, snestang.fs. There's a readme file, there's also a setup page right there. All right, so the next thing we need to install is called the GoWin 1.99 Beta 4 Education version. I'll put a link to GoWin's download website, and you're gonna need to create a free account. If you don't wanna do that, I'll put a link to like Mega NZ with the, uh, the software package. But if you just wanna get it directly from them, you wanna go right here. I recommend, even though all you need is the GoWin programmer, I recommend getting the all-in-one package because it'll come bundled in with the drivers that you need to connect the board to your computer. So find it right here, the GoWin 1.99 Beta 4 Education version. Go ahead and click right here to download the zip. Once you download that, just right click on the program. I recommend run as administrator. Go ahead, hit next. I agree. So it says select components to install. You can do the go in software. I just recommend doing both. Go ahead and hit next. Installs to the C drive. I already have it installed, so it's deleting and replacing the files. So on the final screen, it's going to give you the options to install the USB driver. Go ahead and install both. Go ahead and hit finish. I accept, hit next. Ready to use, finish. Once it's finished, go ahead and hit close. So let's go ahead and launch the program. You can either launch the GoWin programmer or just the GoWin software. If you choose to do the GoWin software, once you get greeted to this screen, you can go ahead and just launch the programmer. And there's the programmer right there. Before we do that, what I recommend doing is getting your SD card set up properly with the ROMs on there. So the software that's being recommended to do this operation is called the AOMI Partition Assistant. Uh, you can download a freeware version. Once you get that installed, you want to locate your SD card. And let's just right click right here. Let's do delete all partitions. Okay. Right here, hit apply. And then after that, Let's find our un unallocated partition. Let's go ahead and hit create partition. Make sure it says FAT32. Go ahead and hit OK. Go ahead and hit apply. So once that's set up, we can go ahead and go to the SD card. And on the root of the drive, just go ahead and start putting ROMs on there. Do not have them zipped. Have them unzipped in .sfc format. And then go ahead, eject the card, and plug it into your device. All right, so once we plug in the uh, the device into our computer, let's go ahead, right here, query, detect cable. It's gonna go ahead and auto detect it. Just go ahead and hit save. So this software is a little tricky. So what I recommend doing is clicking right here and then hit this icon right here, configure device. And if that doesn't work, Go ahead and hit this magnifying glass scan device. Now it's going to let us configure it. Okay. So there's various modes. I had to figure this out through trial and error. SRAM mode, from what I understand, it temporarily writes to the device. So if you turn it off, it loses whatever you write to it. So what I recommend is this right here, external flash mode. So we have various options right here on this screen. We have bulk erase, we have bulk erase and program. So if you hit bulk erase, it's just going to erase everything. If you do erase, it'll erase it and then give you a chance to program it with the file. So you can select the file right there. There's also erase, program and verify. There's also EXC bin erase. I'm not sure what this is. It 
seems to me it might be a more thorough erase. And then right here at the bottom, there's an erase, program, and verify. So let's just do this right here, EX erase, program. Go ahead and hit save. And then right here, this little icon that looks like a play button, go ahead, hit that, and it's going to program the device. So once that finishes, you should be greeted with this green. It'll say SNES Tang at the bottom. It's going to have a list of your ROMs. It's going to have them in the order in which you place them on your device. And there is a recommended software if you need to reorder it, if you want to have it in alphabetical order. From there, you can go ahead, you can plug in your PS2 controller, and then you can select, and then just go ahead and hit X to get the game started. And there it is at the bottom, you see it loading. And the other thing I want to point out that this does run in 720p. Now there is no shortcut to exit out of this, uh, so what I just do, honestly, I just pull the plug on the device, and then I replug it back in, and that reboots the device. I don't know if there's any button on board. I tried all the buttons on the board to see if anything would do a reset. None of the buttons seem to respond. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, this does not run perfect as of yet. It's still in the uh, the beta stages. Little things here and there. Some games just freeze up. Uh, Street Fighter 2, it, it would freeze. Sometimes I got it to play once. And then the other time I tried to load it up, it didn't run. Let's load up Mega Man X. So if you notice, yeah, when he did this, the Mega Buster, it has like a weird sound effect. But other than that, I mean, it seems to be playing really great. You see? Alright, let's load up another game. And the last thing I need to point out before I go, there is no saving. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So once again, just a reminder, this is still in beta development. I really want to wish the developer luck on continuing to develop this device. And once again, we are level 1 online. Shout out once again to Keo Daikin for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link to his channel. And I'll put all the pertinent leaks, links at the bottom in the description. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment below, and make sure to give uh, Nand to Mario a follow on Twitter, uh, where he'll provide updates. And let's see, I'll show you guys one last thing before I get going. Hold on. You see and then I get a black screen right there so just a reminder that it's not perfect so before you spend your money on this you know just know what you're getting yourself into it's not a perfect project the fellow could continue developing it he could drop it right now I don't know what the future holds I really and this is what I talk about as far as what putting your energy into when it comes to this YouTube space. We want to support these developers. We want to, you know, even if it's just moral support, we want to subscribe to their Twitter, subscribe to their channels. It's, it's free to give them a follow, to give some encouragement. Yeah, it's better to be positive than to be negative. That's all I'm trying to say. You guys have a good one. 
We are level one online. See you later.